Commissioner, if I may. Uh, I'm sorry, Commissioner fixed. Commission, the hearings reopened. No, 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 no. That's fine. I, I, I'll reserve my comments for when we have a, a opportunity to vote on it. Um, just wanted to say that I got to uh, jump and and get moving, but um, I do appreciate again you guys covering all of you and uh, appreciate the opportunity to participate virtually today. And I wish you all a uh, great Fourth of July. And, and we wish you well on your your family situation there, and hope that you get a chance to enjoy the holiday as well, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Public hearing is closed. The next public hearing that we have on our schedule has to do with the RPEG, and now I'm forgetting what the acronym is for. Public infrastructure. Residential Public Infrastructure Grant. And Holly, are you leading that discussion? Yes. Can you join us? <laughs> I got them all, man. <laughs> East to west side in texas no, I, <laughs> no, I got a couple good morning and um i do have a sign-in sheet that's being passed around it is one of those formalities that we have for the cdbg grant uh, so as that goes around if you could please sign in we would greatly appreciate it so this is a grant that is being offered through the ohio department of development uh, Every, everyone in ODOD refers to it as the RPIG um, grant. So I love how everybody's saying RPIG here, the RPIG, it's, it's interesting concept. Um, but this does have to do with um, public water and sewer um, improvement projects. So this project or this grant um, is designed to create an, a safe sanitary living environment um, for the state citizens through the provisions of safe and reliable drinking water and the proper disposal of sanitary waste. The maximum grant amount is 750,000 and could include the water and sewer project itself. So the replacement of those major systems. It can also include on-site improvements. And what the state means by that is the laterals that service the individual homes, or if there's something that's not central water and sewer, maybe an on-site well and septic, those types of systems. Um, those uh, on-site systems are capped at 200,000 of the total project cost. And then um, administrative costs for the grant, um, they're capped at 30,000 or 10% of the total grant um, amount. Eligible jurisdictions include non-entitlement counties, cities, and villages. And what that means is if a community doesn't receive CDBG, CDBG funding directly from HUD, the um, federal government. Um, we do not. We receive ours as um, from the state um, allocation program. Um, so we are an eligible community for the residential um, public infrastructure grant. In this particular case, um, oh. the villages are also uh, able to apply um, for that directly, um, but we are do, uh, serving as the grant administrator um, for this particular project um, to help increase the administrative cap capacity purposes of the grant. Uh, projects can include water and sanitary sewer services as long as they provide at least 60% um, of service to residential uh, users. Um, so it's meant specifically um, to predominantly um, benefit residents and not businesses. Um, there's another program that it gets bumped to if it is um, for economic development purposes. Um, each eligible project must have its own health hazard. So this particular case, what we're going to be talking about today is just a sanitary sewer project. But if we had a water and a sanitary sewer project, they would both have to have a health hazard. They can't have one combined hazard. And then again, those on-site laterals and other on-site improvements are eligible projects. Some of the guiding principles for the grant, uh, leverage must be at least a one-to-one -one match. Um, it does have to have the health hazard that I was mentioning. Um, typically, they like to see some kind of EPA uh, mandate. Um, the particular case that we have today doesn't have that mandate, um, but we will be focusing on that replacing a functionally obsolete facility. And I will let um, the engineer, our project engineer, um, talk about that those um, issues with the uh, proposed system or existing system. 
the system has to have long-term sustainability um, and it has to have an, an structure as far as sewer rates, water rates that um, are, have an affordability component to them. Uh, they look at the debt services and uh, also the population that's being serviced by this. And of course, it's CDBG funds, so it does have to service 51% um, low to moderate income um, residents, but they look at how much of that is being, um, how much of that population is benefiting from this. And then they also are looking at readiness to proceed. In this particular case, they're looking at a permit to install PTI for the EPA. Um, so we'll talk about that when we get to the individual project as well. The scoring categories, um, I mentioned the low to moderate area um, benefit. Um, so the higher number of um, low to moderate income residents, you know, the more impact you're having um, in that CDBG related area. Uh, they're also looking at those EPA mandates as well as unsewered municipalities. They're looking at regionalization and shared services. So um, I think that's kind of where we come in and, and how we're working with Fairfield County with those sewer services, et cetera. And the sustainability, financial capacity, and the rate structure, as well as the leverage of uh, local dollars. So what brings us here today and why are we applying for this RPID grant? Uh, the village of Carroll originally came to Fairfield County um, looking for a critical infrastructure grant. Um, that is the grant that we talked about about a month ago. Um, there were four other communities that were asking for those funds as well, and we could only apply on behalf of one of those communities. Uh, when we were reviewing the scopes of those projects, uh, we reached out to the state and uh, we asked about Carol's project because we thought Carol's project uh, was beyond the scope of a critical infrastructure project and more in line with the RPIG, but we wanted to confirm that with the state and they did confirm it. So it made our answer, our, our um, decision or the commissioner's decision on the critical infrastructure a little bit easier because we said, hey, Carol is better suited for the RPIG and we moved them out of the critical infrastructure component and into this grant structure helping us to make a better decision for the, the critical infrastructure. Uh, so since that time, we've been working with the Village of Carroll and trying to move this project forward. Um, this is the third phase of replacing its entire sewer system. Uh, so they have individual grinder pumps um, at, their, um, at the houses, and this um, project is removing those and putting in gravity flow sewer and then helping align it um, to be a, a functional system. And I, again, I will let the project engineer, when we get to that point, talk a little bit more detail about the specific project and the concerns they have. But some of the main issues that they do have um, is that, like I mentioned, the pump um, grinder system, that it's, cause, it's costing the city, the village, about 30,000 per year. Um, to um, to maintain this system, and this is really unsustainable for the village. And so they really, um, from a financial standpoint, need to move forward and replacing these grinder systems. There are also environmental concerns. Um, there are leaks when the grinders fail, um, so that is a, a, an environmental concern. And then the system is aging and um, cannot be uh, maintained long term. Um, and then we have sewage seeping into those yards and homes. This is a map of where those um, systems will be replaced. So there's a total of um, six different segments um, that would be replaced in this phase three. Uh, the proposed cost is three, a little over $3 million. Uh, they are asking for the full $750,000 grant. $720,000 would go towards um, the project cost. $30,000 would go to the administration. The rest of it would be covered under an OEPA loan um, that the village would be um, bearing that loan. So what are the next steps? So there are a couple things that need to happen. Uh, it's been mentioned previously today that we have authorizing legislation um, to select the project um, to 
submit an application for the RPIC funding. So if the commissioners decide that this does make sense um, to move forward, then you would adopt that authorizing legislation at the conclusion of this public hearing. And then that will allow regional planning to submit the pre-application to the Ohio Department of Development. The pre-applications um, need to be to the state um, here soon with the, new, with the full application opening up on July 1st. Um, so we're gonna turn around and get that pre-application to them um, ASAP. Um, if we are accepted under the pre-application, then the state would open up the full application within the ocean system, which is the system where we actually, online system that we upload and actually um, officially apply for the funding. There is no deadline for the final application. So once it's opened up in ocean, we can apply um, at any point in time. However, the more likely the earlier we apply, the more likely there's funding available and uh, the more likely we would be um, funded for the project. So we'll be moving rather quickly um, to get that uploaded and fully submitted to the state um, if we get to that point of the application process. So with that, um, I will turn it back to you and I would um, introduce Gary also with um, DLZ Engineering. He is here on behalf of the Village of Carroll. He's their um, project engineer, and he can explain any of the details of the actual project. And then I uh, just want to also introduce the mayor of uh, Carroll. Everybody knows him, but Irvina is here with us um, in support of the project as well. So I'll turn it over to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And what we'll do just to add some degree of formality is we'll call this proponent testimony. And at this time, I'll ask if there's anyone who would like to speak in favor of the proposed project. Gary Sokol with DLZ. If you would, there, there are still uh, a few folks who are participating online and listening to our meeting. And if you're at the podium, they have a better chance of hearing you. Okay, please. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to come in. Um, we've been working with the Village of Carroll for about five years now trying to replace this system. You guys have actually already submitted a critical infrastructure application a couple of years ago that was funded. It helped us do what we call a phase two. Um, one of the unfortunate or fortunate circumstances as you look at it is the village already has a sewer system, system pressure system. So every individual house has a grinder pump. And it's getting to that point where it's 20 plus years old and the pumps are starting to go bad and we're starting to have, they go bad and the sewage comes up and goes out on the ground. So it creates a health issue. Um, that's all I mentioned. It creates an expense to the village. I mean, they're spending 30 grand. We did check. They're doing a little bit better now since we've replaced maybe about 40% of the system. So what we're doing is helping. Um, but the problem we have is they still owe on the loans from the original system. So taking on more debt just makes it harder for them. So we're kind of doing this in phases so we can go back and hit the funders up several times. Uh, we were hoping this was going to be the last phase. Um, since we started this, anybody that's been in the construction industry knows what's happened to construction prices in the last couple of years. So things have went up dramatically. So we're going to dial this back a little bit, to try to get it in a range that the village can afford. Um, last year, we, we were the first loser when it came to the EPA. We've been applying to the EPA. There's what they call principal forgiveness, which is a grant. Um, we potentially could have got $4 million is what we asked for. But like I said, when in the list of projects that got funded, we were the next one that didn't get funded. So we were the first one. Uh, so we're working on that. We did talk to the EPA. Uh, one of the things they asked for was you know, we have our PTI and we said, look, we've been holding off on the PTI because they're only good for 18 months. And knowing that we need the grant funding, we don't get it when the PTI expires and it costs the village again to go apply for it. So um, we've been we've been having monthly calls with them. So we think there's a chance we could potentially give it some grant from them as well. Um, which will help support the project and get it done. If that happens, potentially we finish up everything in this next round. But just again, to try to piece it away and not have to take a whole bunch of debt out in the village, we want to kind of keep doing it in phases, take advantage of any grant funds we can get. So, thank you, sir. Thank you for your presentation. Is there anyone else in attendance who would like to speak in favor of the proposed project? Tony Vogel. Um, this, it, the village has been doing a great job, it's an older system, um, not many residents, so they're trying to put it together, um, 
two phases before this have taken a large chunk. That space, um, but this is this is a very good project to get them where they need to be as far as systems. So, folks, now we have microphones above us, which is why I make you guys come up and other people can sit down. It just has to do with the way the, the room's mic. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in favor of the proposed project? Mayor, we'd like to hear from you. Yeah. I would. <laughs> You're not getting out of here free. Let's oh, open. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. I just am asking for the commissioner's support for this project, and I think everybody's did the history on the project. It really started when the school bill on the Carroll East Road was they wanted a sanitary sewer, and our old system couldn't handle the school. So, with previous mayor and Gary got together and you know decided on the gravity system, and that does help everyone, not only the employees but also the residents. You know, I know it's small potatoes, but for one, you don't have the sewage run in the yard if your pump quits. But also, you don't have to pay that little bit of electric bill for the pump. You know, I know it's a little bit, but that does help. Anytime you can save a dime, it does help. So it does also help the residents. And it helps employees. Our sewer goes to the county, so in turn, it does help the county. So I think it would be a good project to get funded, and we do hope that we can do the whole thing. Be done. But thanks. Thank you for being with us today. Yes. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in favor of the proposed project? Here, Don, I'll ask: Is there anyone in attendance who would like to speak in opposition to the proposed project? Here, Don, I'll ask if there's anyone in attendance maybe doesn't have a strong feeling about whether they're in favor of or opposed to the project, but has a comment, a question, or a concern that they'd like to raise at this time. I'll see if Commissioner Levesey has any questions, comments, or concerns at this time. I have no questions. Thank you. I, I don't have questions either. I'm just, uh, as we talk about Carol, um, my grandmother was a, a school teacher, a, a music teacher in the Carol system. I spent a lot of time uh, at her home on Beaver Street uh, growing up in my youth. And uh, so I, I, I look forward to trying to be helpful here. Um, and uh, is there any other formality? That I have not covered at this time that I need to cover before this public hearing would be closed. Not for closing the hearing. The only thing we have is to pass the legislation after you close the hearing. Certainly take that matter up at that time. Having completed the requirements for the hearing, this public hearing is closed and we thank you all for coming. Now the commission has the opportunity to have the resolution that would allow this to proceed. And I'll ask Rochelle to read that resolution at this time. Resolution 2023 6.27.ee, a resolution to approve the PY 2023 residential public infrastructure grant application. So moved. Second, discussion. Well, on behalf of the commission, I mean, I, I think this is a good project. I did find myself curious. I didn't want to necessarily ask in the public hearing, but um, and and please, if I'm putting you on the spot, Holly, just say, hey, don't do that. Um, but do you have a forecast on this? Um, I honestly don't have a forecast on it, except for that. The, I think the positive thing with this is that it's a rolling grant, and if we can get in earlier, then we are, you know, able to not have as much competition as we keep going forward. That's why I went. So I think there's a better forecast that earlier we can do that. Further discussion? Please call to roll. Commissioner Levesey? Yes. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Resolution passes 2-0. Is there any other issue or item that anybody would like to bring to the attention of the commission at this time? Uh, 
I'll accept a motion. Motion to adjourn. I got a motion to adjourn and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. The commission is adjourned, and we thank you all for coming and hope you have a nice 4th of July holiday. Thank you.